Hey guys, sorry I haven't uploaded a video in a while, but here is a, another watercolour painting for you. Um, I would like to say that I've been busy, which I have been a little bit, but I think I just haven't been prioritising making videos for YouTube at the moment. I'm very focused on the watercolours that I'm making. If you don't know, I hand make my own watercolours. You can check out my Instagram down below where I post a lot more about that. But I use the same space to make my watercolours and the same space to film my videos. So it's a bit of a hassle to clean it up and I think I just procrastinate and don't get around to it. But I'm so glad that I did this painting. I got home after work one day and thought I'd sit down and just do a quick painting. And about two hours later, it was 11 o'clock and I needed to get my lunch ready for the next day. But here we are and I'm really excited to share this one with you because I feel like it's a step forward in my painting. Now I didn't show the first part of this sketch because it's done with that colour raise that you can see me using. That's just a pink colour raise pencil and you can't really see it on camera so I just showed uh, using my mechanical pencil. So there is a sketch under this one, you just can't see it. Another thing is I don't generally show my sketching process. Um, often for my other paintings I use a light box because I sketch in my sketchbook first. It's a whole process how I transfer it to paper. But for this one I thought I'd give it a go and it actually turned out alright. I also don't really like sketching sitting at a table. I like, sit, like the sketchbook to be sitting on my lap or the paper to be sitting on my lap so it's a bit odd for me. It just feels a bit off to sketch at a table. Something I should probably practice and get used to and I think it turned out alright for this. Anyway, as I said before, I do make my own watercolours. Um, these colours that I'm using right now are not them. I used one colour of my own in this painting. It's quite a dominant colour in this painting and I'll talk about that later because I'm excited about it and I absolutely love painting with it and it's definitely going to become a staple in my own palette. Now for this background I wanted something quite soft because I wanted the focal point to be a portrait obviously. I didn't want a heavy background at all and I was actually thinking of just leaving the background white but it just didn't feel right to me so I put in this beautiful colour. It's a Holbein colour. I can't remember what it's called right now. I want to say shell pink something like that. Um, and a vermilion orange, I think it's called. It was a mixture of those two colours just to create this, this little kind of halo fade, fadey thing going on in the background. Now when I sat down to this painting, I was super ready to do some real loose painting. I just watched some Arlie Bean. Uh, she's a YouTuber, you probably know of her because she's pretty great at <laughs> watercolour. If you're into watercolour, I suggest you check her out. Uh, I'll try and remember to link her down below. I've mentioned her before. She's a huge inspiration for me. And so I wanted to do a really loose, really loose painting and I'm kind of inspired by the watercolour eyes that I've done recently. Um, if you want to check my channel out, I've just done a few watercolour eye studies that I've tried to be a bit more loose with my painting. And I think I kind of fell in between being loose with this one. I don't think I was as carefree as I wanted, but I don't think I realised the patience that I needed to actually make this look good as well while looking loose. It was a bit of an impatient painting day for me even though I do have my heat tool, so I don't wait for layers to dry. I guess what I'm trying to say is I didn't go into this with a plan. I went in going, I'm going to paint something and it's going to look good. Um, and I actually really like how it turned out, but there was no plan for this. And I think I kind of started off with like an unwillingness to sit back and look and think about what I was doing. I just wanted to paint. And as I said, when I started off this painting or when I decided I was going to paint that day, this was a few days ago that I painted this now, I knew I wanted to paint loose and then as soon as I did a sketch I was happy with the sketch and I was like well I'm more comfortable with painting I guess in a more like blended manner maybe I should paint like that because I like the sketch and I was attached to accidentally or not accidentally but not the painting not turning out well and that's something I really struggle with with my art and having an Instagram feed is trying to stay consistent because I don't stick to one style I don't stick to one medium you know, I want to paint abstract, I want to use resin, I want to use alcohol inks, I want to use polymer clay, I want to use oil paint, I want to use watercolour. And as you may notice, I am more drawn to watercolour at the moment, but I'm really conflicted with wanting to paint this really loose style. And then if you look back at some of my other videos, I, I like a more illustrative, structured kind of style as well. So it's hard to try and figure out what I should be doing. I think I feel a pressure to present with one style and one way and stay consistent. But I am really growing and learning a lot as an artist. And as I've said before, I am new to watercolour. And I think I'm going to try and let go of that pressure to 
be consistent and to maintain one style because how am I going to grow if I feel like I need to stay within this box and sure I could maybe perfect well not perfect but if I focused on one style I could get better at it faster something but I just want to enjoy art as well I don't want it it's not my job um, I don't want to feel pressured to produce a certain type of artwork and speaking of wanting to try different mediums I had a huge impulse purchase the other day and spent probably about a hundred dollars on alcohol inks and yakko paper never used them before in my life um, my local art store is having 50% off my art and craft store they're not really like a art store um, they're having 50% off and they've been having 50% off since like the end of the financial year which was what June July and I just had this impulse to do alcohol inks so if you want to see how that's going um, I've recorded my first attempt and it's questionable <laughs> it's questionable but I am happy with how one piece came out so I might put that together into a video I recorded it but I'm not sure if I want to put that in a video so let me know what you think about that anyway back to that one watercolor that I made if you can see all this beautiful shadow color that is the watercolor that I mixed up myself it is a three pigment watercolor and I absolutely think it's gorgeous now in this neck area I was not practicing my patience as I mentioned earlier and I wasn't allowing it to dry I, didn't, I don't even know if I used my heat tool to try and make it dry so it's a bit murky at the moment but I do go back in and darken those shadows and I kind of went back over the whole painting and got a bit bolder with the shadows that I was using which I think is important and something that I, I normally start off quite low which I think you're supposed to do with a little car I don't know that's how I do it but yeah I do go back in and sharpen and bolden all those shadows now the materials that I'm using are the materials that I pretty much always use I have 300 GSM cold press watercolor paper I can't remember the brand at the moment I'll try and list it down below this watercolor paper has changed my painting I have tried a few brands and this is by far the most mind-blowing change I've seen in my artwork is the watercolor paper it just allows me to paint in such a different way everything just looks better and feels better and I am converted to spending a lot more money on watercolor paper than I used to now the paints that I use besides that one that I've made myself which I have made other watercolor paints but I only included this one in this painting uh, Holbein and Daniel Smith they're the two brands that I use and this brush that I basically did this whole painting with I think I might have added some details later with a smaller brush just some very fine things and I used a bit of gouache at the end which I don't use this brush for is a Polina bright brush this is the only brush of hers that I have it is a size one I believe she has four sizes and I want to get them all this brush is amazing to be honest though, I don't think I need the larger sizes because so what that's size one so there's a two and a three yeah there's a two and a three above it I don't think I need them I don't plan on painting bigger than this in the near future this is an A4 piece of paper and this brush does everything I need for it I don't need more water retention if anything that's the thing I struggle with a bit with this brush is sometimes I pick up too much water with it and need to use some tissue or paper to dry it out a bit to pick up some of the water back off the paper but if you are looking for any brush recommendations I couldn't recommend this brush more it has not shed a single hair I've used it on multiple paintings it's reasonably priced it's vegan um, it's cruelty free so it's got no animal hair in it but it retains water like a animal hair brush does it's awesome and I absolutely love her brushes so I absolutely recommend them they're amazing now if we look at the painting now I am really happy with how it's turned out I really like that eye I like the depth that I got around it and the things that I'm not happy about with this painting would be the nose I feel like I just went too sharp with one of the shadows and I didn't pull it back a bit and then like I don't know I just don't think I blended it up into the brow bone area well enough the other part that I'm not 100% on is that shadow under the chin in some way I do like it but at the same time I feel like again it's too harsh and I could have blended it out I don't know if that's me battling with my inner wanting to blend everything out and have everything look smooth versus you know using a, a more loose style and I think that's the hardest part is finding that balance because I don't want to combine those styles I enjoy painting in both of them so being able to let go of one style whilst enjoying and immersing myself in the other is something that I need to practice another thing that I noticed whilst doing this painting is 
if you have watched any of my previous videos, I have two limited colour watercolour eye studies that I did. And doing this painting, I've got my whole palette there in front of me and 20 or 30 other tubes of Holbein watercolours that I pretty much haven't touched. And I just, it's not that I wasn't willing to use the other colours, I just didn't feel the need to. So it was really nice just to fall back into this limited palette. And I did, I did bring in other colours, like don't get me wrong, I used some other colours for my watercolour palette, but I don't feel like I was leaning too heavily on convenience colours. And yeah, it was really nice to just be able to work with a limited palette comfortably. Now again, if you have watched any of my other videos, you might notice that there are times where watercolour paper doesn't agree with me and I blame myself. I think I'm doing something wrong, whether I'm exposing it to something or I'm touching it too much. I don't know because I feel like I'm pretty protective of my paper and it stays put away. But sometimes I like the paint stains the paper and I have used other brands and it's happened as well. So I think it's me. But I was doing so well up until this painting until now. If you can see it, at the left of the forehead, there's just a slight dot there. And I tried to lift it, I tried to rub it off, and it was committed to staying on my paper. So I didn't film this part, but I decided to roll with it and give this person some freckles. And I actually really like how it turned out, so I guess that was definitely a happy accident. One other thing about this painting that I, I guess, was a learning curve for me, it was blonde hair. <laughs> um... I don't know, it's just not, I, I, maybe it's because I'm a brunette myself, I just do not gravitate towards painting blonde hair. I'll paint white hair, I'll paint red hair, I'll, I don't know, it's just blonde hair and I'm worried about getting it too yellow, getting it too orange, getting it, getting that like realistic blonde colour. So I hope I did alright here, I think I did and it doesn't look too much like a wig. <laughs> but that's, yeah, just something to practice and to get better at. Anyway, I have now talked for 12 minutes and I surprise myself every video that I actually can get through a video and talk so much about my own artwork. I guess I have more to say than I think I do. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I do try and get videos out every Wednesday, but as you might tell, it's probably been about a month since my last video, so I'm getting them out when I can. Um, my Instagram is linked down below if you'd like to follow me over there and check out those paints that I make and also any other artwork or sketches that I'm working on. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.